Now that the cabinets are ready to go in, to install them I need some kind of base to put them on. And what's nice about doing it that way is you can make the base piece nice and level to give you a level surface or a level top to put the cabinets on. I can take some of the same 3 quarter inch birch and make a 5 inch wide frame basically. That'll be a platform for the cabinets to go on. I cut dados in the long sides so that'll help the, the shorter pieces line up to make the frame. And I can just glue and nail them together through the dados. Now to hold the frame to the floor, I thought I could make some little L brackets out of the same pieces of wood. So I just took some of the ends and some of the scrap pieces and made little L's. And those will sit on the floor and help hold the frame in place. And the thought with those is I could use those to help level the frame so I can make the top perfectly level. So there's how the L's go in place. And I can use a clamp to hold the frame up a little bit and then screw the L brackets in place so that the top of the frame is perfectly level and flat. And the floor ended up being pretty close to level, so I didn't have to hold it up very much. And I patched the places in the wall that I had pulled apart for the plumber. Now it's time to take the cabinets inside. I can move the drawers out to make them lighter and move the top off and then take them in in parts. And the smaller section under the sink I can carry, but the longer section with the slides is a little heavier and a little bigger. So I got some help with that. And I got help with the drawers. In fact, the kids carried the drawers in, which was actually a really big help. And we moved the pieces in from the shop into the house. Now in the kid's bathroom, they went in just fine, but I found when we put it into the master bathroom, I had thought I had made them half an inch narrower than the space they needed to fit in, so I'd have room, but they ended up not fitting, which was a little bit frustrating. So I had to go with the nuclear option and cut one of the pieces down to size, which I hadn't actually had to do before, so this was something new, but I thought it would work. So I, I put the shorter cabinet that goes under the sink on the table saw and just sliced off one end. And for the last cut, I put some little cleats on the previous cut so that when I cut off the last side, it wouldn't be too floppy and sort of fall apart on the table saw. And this worked and it came apart. Once I had the end cut off, I could move the fence just a little bit and slice a little bit off of the end piece and doing this would make the cabinet a little shorter. So I then just put biscuit joints on the end and just glued the whole cabinet back together again. And as crazy as this seems, it seemed to work pretty well. And then it fit just fine, which was really nice. And you can see how the, the sort of window frame in the back of the cabinet frames the plumbing coming through the wall. So I didn't have to cut little specific holes or anything like that in the back of the cabinet. And the thought I'd always had was that I would have a little gap between the two cabinets and I could fill that with a little strip of wood and that would sort of be my take up space for the for the width of the room and the width of the cabinets. With the side panel being open on the sink section I had a little view to the other cabinet which was totally fine but I had a some scrap pieces of laminate left over from the top so I glued that into that space. Then I screwed the two cabinets together with a strip of wood in between and then screwed them down to the base. Then I brought the top in, and that fit in just fine. And then I can use the frame on the top of the cabinet to attach screws through to the countertop piece. So I now have a double layer of plywood on the top, which gives it a nice thickness, and it helps lock the two cabinets together. Now to cut the hole for the sink, most sinks come with a template that you can use to cut the hole for that specific sink. So I spray mounted the template down to the countertop, and then I just cut along the line and made the hole for the sink. And I used just a regular blade in the jigsaw and it didn't mess up the laminate. I did put some tape along the cut, which may have helped a little bit. So I pulled the tape off and cleaned everything up. Then the plumber could come back and put the sinks in. This really isn't my forte. <laughs> and the sink seems to work. Now I'll work on the drawer fronts and the two doors. And there'll be a piece of plywood as the centerpiece of the fronts with a frame of wood around that piece of plywood. And I'm using Kaya as the wood in the master bathroom. And I've wanted to try 
an edge banding technique where you have two router bits and they each cut a shape that fits together to help sort of lock the edge banding or the frame to the, to the plywood. So in cutting the frame, I would do the edge on the shaper and make the shape and then cut off that edge on the table saw to get the width that I needed for that piece. In doing this, I don't have to run a really thin piece through the shaper. I can run a nice wide board through the shaper and then cut off the piece that I need. And then I cut down the piece of plywood to the sizes that I needed. And I ran the edge of the plywood through the shaper to get the shape that would fit the piece of trim that, that attaches. And I cut my pieces of trim to length. And I cut them a little bit longer than I needed so that I could cut them with the piece of plywood in the end to get the final width. I thought about trying to miter the corners on these and that seemed like a lot more work and it wouldn't allow me to adjust the size of the faces and the doors in the end when I was fitting them onto the cabinet. So I did it where I just ran them over the corners so you see the end of the trim on the sides of the drawer fronts and the doors. And they mostly fit together without any clamping, but I clamp them just to sort of hold them in place. And then once they dried, I could sand one side and get the trim and the plywood perfectly flush and then cut the other side on the table saw to get everything nice and parallel and flush. And then I had to do the other side of the drawer fronts, the tops and bottoms. I found with doing these, as I came to the end, I had to put a sort of a support piece so that the grain wouldn't blow out from the, from the chipper because you're going across the end grain with the router bit. And it was just more gluing. And I thought I'd vary the width of the trim. So the sides are wide, they're near an inch wide, and then the tops and bottoms are thin. So you can see how you see the end of the thin top and bottom piece of trim here. Then I made the doors and they're the same as the drawer fronts. They're just a bigger dimension and I sanded. The trim and the plywood were very close in thickness, but, but not exactly, exactly. So that's what the sanding let me do, is to get everything nice and flush. And I put finish on, and I'm just using wipe-on polyurethane for this. I figured it needed to be a little bit more durable. And I had a base piece that I needed to make that would cover up the, the base on the bottom. So it's sort of behind the toe kick of the cabinet. And it's out of the same piece of plywood. And once that was dry, I could cut it to length and put it in place. And I realized at about this point that if I didn't attach it and didn't push it all the way back under the cabinet, I could use it as a platform to hold the bottom of the drawer fronts and the doors so that I would have a nice straight datum to get things started at. So I put the hinges on the doors and they require a 35 millimeter hole in the door. And it took a while, but I finally, finally figured out I needed about five millimeters between the hole and the edge of the door so that the door would fall in the right place. So the hinge just fits in that hole and then is screwed in place. So then the doors can go in place. And I found because I had a double door, I could put one door in and then kind of reach in and put the screws in for the mounting plate of the hinge. And the door could sit on the, the bottom toe kick piece that I had set at the bottom. And then the drawer fronts, I realized I should probably drill the holes for the pulls in the shop and get them perfectly aligned and in the right place. In doing the drawer fronts, I could set the first one on the bottom piece, and then I could screw the drawer front in place from the front through the two holes that I had for the pulls. And then the next drawer I could shim up to the height that I wanted, and then do the same thing and screw that drawer front into place. So do, doing it this way, let me get things perfectly aligned and then screw things in place from the front. Then once those were attached, I could open the drawer and clamp the drawer front to the drawer and then pull the screws out that I just put in, drill the hole all the way through for the screws for the pull, and then put the screws for the pull in. So the pull will actually help hold the drawer front in place. And then put the pull on. And I added two screws through the drawer into the drawer front to help hold it on as well. And then once that's done, then the drawer front is attached to the drawer. And everything lined up nicely. Base piece as a support and guide for the drawer fronts. I can attach it to the back of the toe kick. And I'll just use some finished nails. And there we have it. 
So I still need to do a little bit of trim on the ends of the drawers towards the shower, and I need to do some kind of backsplash. And the other big project is to do the medicine cabinet. So at some point, I'll have those done. Thanks for watching.